नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन 38 ऑफ अवर कोर्स ऑन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग गाइडलाइंस फॉर प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन सो करंटली वी आर इन द लास्ट वीक ऑफ अवर डिस्कशन एंड एज यू आर अवेयर दैट दिस इज अ एट वीक कोर्स इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू हैव 40 सेशंस ऑफ हाफ एन आवर ईच इन द लास्ट वीक अवर फोकस प्राइमेरिली वॉज ऑन द ज्वाइनिंग स्ट्रैटेजीज एंड दिस वीक अवर फोकस इज ऑन समिंग अप what we have already covered and to discuss the topics which are of great relevance in today's scenario and in that context if you can remember we have seen in session number 36 and session number 37 the design for environment the design for environment process we have seen that what are the steps or the flow chart that we have to follow when we are applying the design for environment concept in our product design approach in session number 36 we discussed very briefly the concept of design for environment so by now what i believe that there are other good topics like design for reliability design for quality design for safety there are number of other important aspects that can be discussed but because of the time constraint and because of the way we have planned our course we have been able to appreciate one important aspect that is design for environment what i will suggest the learners is that if you have really feel motivated or if you have really felt motivated for undergoing such type of courses you must try to further enhance your knowledge with topics like design for quality topics like design for safety our focus primarily has been on as the name of our course suggests manufacturing guidelines for product design so we have majorly focused our attention on the manufacturing processes and what are the design guidelines that we must take into account when we are going to design a product now today as you can see on your screen our target is product architecture so by now whatever we have covered we have covered design for primary forming processes such as sand casting die casting injection molding compression molding we have seen design for machining we have seen design for uh, other important processes like joining we have seen welding we have seen adhesive joining we have seen soldering brazing then we have seen for advanced joining processes like vibration welding we have seen ultrasonic welding we have seen induction welding so basically our primary purpose has been met our primary purpose was to keep in mind the guidelines the general guidelines that help us to design a product which is easily manufacturable we want to design our product in such a way that we are able to manufacture it in the most simplistic manner so that was the target now we are closing our course we are at the fag end of our course we are in the 8th week of our discussion now to close the discussion we have taken a very important aspect which is very very relevant why because when we are designing a product as i have already highlighted in session number 36 that when we are designing a product there are three important things to ensure the product quality we have to see what type of materials we are choosing what type of manufacturing we are choosing for our product the most important that what is the design of our product so when we are designing our product we have to finalize the materials we have to finalize the manufacturing route or strategy so when we are finalizing the materials and manufacturing that is going to happen for realizing that product we have to take into account the impact of these decisions impact of the decisions regarding selection of material impact of the decisions regarding selection of the manufacturing process on on our environment we must try to select the sustainable materials we must try to select the green manufacturing strategies so that the product we develop is recyclable is reusable or can be disposed of or discarded into the environment without causing any harm to the mother earth so that is a very 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 important decision that we have to take and therefore towards the end of our course after discussing the processes the materials the design strategies like dfm and dfa we have finally concluded in the 8th week that we must take care of the environment when we are selecting the materials and manufacturing for our product design
टूडे वी आर ट्राइंग टू फर्दर सम अप अवर इंडिविजुअल डिस्कशन बिकॉज एज वी हैव सीन दैट अ प्रोडक्ट इज गोइंग टू बी मेड अप ऑफ अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ सब कॉम्पोनेंट्स और सब असेंबलीज और मॉडुलर पार्ट्स अगेन आई एम कमिंग टू द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द camera which is doing this recording i think some of you will be just having a smile on your face or maybe may burst into laughter also that indrdeep singh has taken maybe 10 times example of the camera why because i am looking into the camera and this is the best example that comes to my mind when we are recording this course just google a bigger camera or a recording camera you will see it is so complex design there are so many modular parts for recording the uh, live session for recording the lecture or recording the session or recording the discussion that we are doing so each and every modular part has got some functionality each part is going to perform certain function there are there is a stand so it is the purpose of the stand is to support the camera now how this module has to be integrated with the overall product so that basically sets up the product architecture so in product architecture we will try to see that the individual parts that we have manufactured using any of the standard processes that, that we have already covered we have already covered sand casting die casting injection molding compression molding then various machining processes can be done in many cases we may like to join using adhesive joining welding soldering brazing so many different processes uh, these are the keywords that we have already discussed so these processes we can manufacture the individual components now how these individual components will be integrated into a final product that basically has to be decided in the very beginning of the product design process so for individual components we can take care of the guidelines that we have already covered and there are number of other guidelines which we know which we have not been able to cover because of the time constraint that we have for individual session so there are good books available you can go through the books and further fine tune further tweak further hone your skills related to the design of a particular product which is to be going which is going to be manufactured by any standard manufacturing process so we have just introduced that there are certain set of guidelines for each and every process which must be taken into account when you are designing a product so today we will see the product architecture that is combining these individually manufactured parts by different processes into a complete product so how the product architecture will take into account or what are the parameters that we need to take into account when we combine these individual parts into a complex assembly so this is given in number of e resources but we have taken that or we have developed the discussion based on this very good book that we usually follow for product design product design and development fifth edition by carl alrich and stephen eppinger so a very very good book on product design and can be taken as a textbook also for Uh, understanding the course on product design there are other good, good books like jeffrey buthroyd product design for manufacturing and assembly there are number of good books which are available on this topic but this discussion has been developed based on the text provided in this book that is carl alrich and stephen eppinger product design and development now let us see the product architecture what is the definition as i have already told and try to explain with the help of the camera the modular parts have been designed each modular part has got its own functionality and then these parts have been assembled together to produce the final camera or to assemble the final camera so the product architecture which means the arrangement of functional elements arrangement of functional elements now you will have different functional elements for example the stand of the camera is one functional element the lens system is another functional element the adjustment system is another functional element so there are different functional elements which are arranged or they are finally brought together a interface is developed between the various functional elements and finally these functional elements combine together to give us the product so the arrangement of functional elements into physical chunks now what are the chunks and what are the synonyms of chunks that we are going to discuss maybe in the subsequent slides which become the building blocks so one of the maybe meaning of chunks is that the chunks become the building blocks for the product or a family of 
product. So, basically it is the explosion of the product into the individual chunks and these chunks develop an interface among themselves to create the product or a family of product. So, the example is given here this is a maybe a black box this is the product that we are using, but this product may be made up of maybe module 1, module 2, module 3, module 4. So, 4 modules may be there can be other modules also which are given here 5, 6, 7, 8. So, a number of modules may combine together to produce the product. So, we have to explode the product into the individual modules and these individual modules we can manufacture using any of the processes or maybe some additional processes which we not which we have not been able to cover and these modules will give us the final product. Now, other terms for chunks as I have already told the synonyms a chunk is made up of a collection of components that carry out various functions. Now, the word function here is very very important and normally in the course on value engineering we talk about the functional analysis only. So, maybe if possible we will try to see if we can come up with a course on value engineering maybe a small course of 10 hour duration. But here just I would like to introduce that the function is very very important here because each and every chunk will create or will establish certain function or will satisfy in order to make it more simpler in or it will definitely satisfy some function. For example, if we again take the example of the camera or the video recording camera, the function of the stand is to support the camera. So, well in value engineering normally the function we give by a verb and a noun definition. For example, in this case we can say verb which can be support and the noun can be camera. So, the function of the stand is support the camera. So, similarly for different parts or different modules or different chunks we can write the functional definition of each and every chunk that is being combined together to make the product and even further as per the definition the chunks can further have sub components which are combining together to produce one chunk or one module. So, here we can see the other term for chunks or elements that make up a chunk are a subsystem sometimes we can call it subsystem or a cluster or a module or a building block and these are interconnected with each other maybe one cluster is interconnected with the another cluster with the help of the interfaces. So, these interfaces have to be designed have to be developed when we are conceptualizing our product that what are going to be the individual building blocks, individual chunks, individual modules, individual subsystems and how these chunks or subsystems or modules are going to interact with each other and those interfaces have to be developed. So, these are interrelated suppose we can say this is cluster C1, cluster C2 interfaces connect these clusters together or these chunks together. So, each and every chunk will perform some or certain defined function and each of these will combine together to give us a complete system. Now, system can be an equipment, system can be a machine, system can be a product. So, we will see an example or two to understand that what are the chunks and how these chunks combine together to give us a product or a machine or machine can also be a product. So, the architecture and architectural decisions we can see the architecture of a product is the scheme by which the functional elements I think I have explained the word function the functional element means each and every chunk or element will perform certain function of the product are arranged into physical chunks and by which the chunks interact. So, this is given. So, the architecture decisions that we take what are going to be the physical elements modularity interfaces that they suppose in our product architecture we say there are going to be 5 modules. Now, these 5 modules how modules will interact with each other whether the first module will have certain interaction with the fifth module or second or third are going to interact with each other. So, those interaction will be treated as the interfaces. Then the product platform or variety that 
what is the product variety that we wish to offer to our customer maybe many times you will see a single product has five variants or three variants so in one of the variants two of the chunks may be missing and in another variant all five chunks or all five modules may be present so that is basically the product variety which in which we have to decide when we are fixing up the product architecture why because when we are offering variants to the customer it must be easy for us to take out a chunk which we are not offering for a particular model to the customer so that those type of decisions also have to be taken at the architectural level only then most important why the companies are in business cost is a very important parameter manufacturability we have already covered is most important that we have to see that how easy it is to manufacture so when we are deciding the architecture of our product and the interfaces we have decided we have already decided what are going to be the various modules we have to see that whether it is easy to manufacture these modules independently or within a module what are the individual sub components that we must make so that the manufacturability becomes easy if our product architecture is very very complex sometimes we may not be able to identify the manufacturing processes which can be used for process that module so those decisions have to be taken at the product architecture level then product development management functional elements already i have told the functional elements are the most important chunks so each of the chunk will be designated for the particular purpose for which the chunk has been listed we will see the with the help of an example that how we can divide how we can explode how we can segregate how we can classify the various chunks and the modules for the product so that is basically the decisions that have to be taken when we are finalizing the product architecture modularity interfaces functional classification of the modules cost manufacturability all these parameters will help us to optimize our product architecture so that we are able to produce it in the most efficient effective productive and maybe uh, profitable manner because the profitable manner is the most important uh, word or the terminology that is important for each and every organization that each organization will try to develop a product architecture in such a way or they will be uh, they will be more than happy to manage the point is written here product development management so the management will definitely try to finalize the product architecture in such a way so that the product is profitable in the market so the architecture of a product is the scheme by which the functional elements of the product are arranged into physical chunks and by which the chunks interact so that is basically the architecture and what are the various factors that are going to be influenced by the product architecture is listed in the slide now this is a very very important similar diagram we have already seen not the same but the similar we have seen in the very first session when we started our discussion on this course on manufacturing guidelines for product design we have seen that product design is a step by step by step process and we have tried to establish that what is the relevance of this course in the overall product development cycle so again we are coming back we started with the similar diagram in our session number one in session number 38 again we are coming to the similar diagram only so we can see that we have to do the planning concept development is done system level design detailed design testing and refinement for testing and refinement we will see another session maybe the subsequent session where we will see the concept of rapid prototyping in our next session we will try to cover this topic because before going for the actual production ramp up we need to test the model that how it will be manufactured how it will look like whether the various sub parts will be able to fit into each other or not or what are the assembly issues related to that what are the functional issues related to the uh, product so all those things will be checked at the testing and refinement stage so we will try to see that what are the various decisions and where the product architecture comes in so the product architecture is determined early in the development process early 
सो वी विल ट्राई टू फिक्स अप द आर्किटेक्चर इन द वेरी बिगिनिंग स्टेजेस ऑफ अवर प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट प्रोसेस दिस इज नॉट अ लीनियर एंड सिक्वेंशियल प्रोसेस सो मैनी टाइम्स देयर कैन बी मूवमेंट अक्रॉस इट इज नॉट लीनियर एंड सिक्वेंशियल मैनी टाइम्स वी विल गो forward and go back maybe depending upon we have decided a particular product architecture but when we start designing we go to the next stage of detailed designing there may be some issues that may creep up and in that case we need to change our product architecture a bit many times you will see even the product has been launched after the launch of the product also the company comes up with a better modified product with a modified architecture why because from based on the customer feedback many times there are improvements that are possible in the product architecture so basically as a standard this is the stage which is or this these are the steps or the sequence that is followed for developing any product so we can see that platform decision concept decision and decomposition decision so majorly we would like to finalize our product architecture in the very beginning of our product development process but that is not final many times we may need changes we may need to revert back to our initial stages to come up with a modified product with a better architecture now different types of product architectures are there modular we will try to understand it with the help of an example and integral architecture so the modular product architecture you can see an example of sony walkman chunks implement one or a few functions entirely so the modular product architecture we are talking of the modular product architecture and the example is given here interactions between the chunks are very well defined now we can see maybe this part can be one module and the headphones can be the other module so there are module number 1 module number 2 so we can see the chunks implement one or a few functions in entirety so the two are independent we can use maybe in many cases the headphones with another device also so they are independent in the functions and the walkman we can say is the uh, you can say will create music based on the input that we give to the walkman so it will create music it is independent of whether we are create uh, connecting the uh, headphones with the walkman or not so maybe even if we don't connect it can give us a music so when we want to hear maybe in solitude or as a, as a maybe sitting in a room where lot of people are sitting we only want to listen to it we don't want others to be disturbed so we can put our headphones on so both have their independent function so which is clearly mentioned here chunks implement chunks means the modules implement one or a few functions independently or entirely interactions between chunks are very well defined modular architecture has advantages in simplicity and reusability for a product family or a platform as i have already explained they can be reused the modular uh, parts can be reused now this is an example again of a modular architecture the previous one is again one example so this is example number 1 or we can say example number a because 1 and 2 we have already used this is our example number b for the modular architecture so we can see here it is box is there what is the function function is protect cargo from the weather so this is the box inside which will protect the material that we are transporting from the weather hitch to connect to the vehicle fairing minimize the air drag bed support the cargo loads springs suspend the trailer structure wheels transfer loads to the road so here also this is an example of the modular architecture why because each and every module can be independently performing its function and are not the functions are not too much interacting so independently or entirely each and every part is performing its function as is given in the previous slide interactions between the chunks are well defined chunks implement one or a few functions entirely so entirely each and every part is performing the function and the interaction also is very very well defined as is given here so this is another example now the second type of uh, architecture is the integral product architecture so here we see the integral product architecture and a camera is shown here 
functional elements are implemented by multiple chunks multiple chunks so there is a uh, maybe uh, three or four chunks they interact with each other to produce a particular function so here we can see in the previous slide functions are independent for the various parts of the product so each and every chunk of the product or each or every module of the product is performing a certain function in entirety here each and every function may be combined for example suppose we want to uh, use a flash so when we are using a flash we have to click maybe a cam uh, uh, from the button and then integrally there will be some motion of uh, maybe a uh, system through which the flash will be activated so basically there is a interaction between the various chunks so functional elements are implemented by multiple chunks or a chunk may implement many functions so e a chunk may implement many functions so they which means that when we have identified that the product is being made out of three chunks only one chunk may provide different functions interaction between the chunks are poorly defined poorly defined so one chunk is performing four or five different functions so the interaction between the chunks is not very well defined maybe we can have a chip which is performing 10 different functions now this is a chip which is which is one chunk of our product but this is performing 10 different functions so the interaction between the chunks or maybe this chip and there is another chip interaction between the two is not very well defined whereas both may be performing five functions each so the interactions between the chunks are not properly defined or poorly defined integral architecture generally increases performance and reduces costs for any specific product level so the costs are less because we are identifying that each chunk will perform a large number of functions as well as it increases the performance also there are advantages of the integral product architecture and therefore we see these days we have very compact products why because the chunks are multifunctional a single chunk is performing a large number of functions so even you can see an example also in such a way that in integral product approach we have seen an example where we have this type of a trolley system for carrying the cargo whereas in integral architecture we are very very compact product but it is multifunctional and is performing different functions so therefore the cost wise also we get the effectiveness as well as the performance also is better now steps to establish the product architecture so there are two types of approaches we have understood one one is the modular approach another one is the integral approach so let us now to try to understand steps to establish that how what are the steps that we have to follow first is we will try to understand it with the help of a example create a functional model or a schematic of the product first is schematic how is it will be working so we have we have already seen with the help of an example where a uh, maybe a truck is going to carry the cargo so how the wagon of the truck will look like the design of the wagon is showing the wheels also showing the box also showing the hitch also so that is basically a schematic model of the product so create a functional model or schematic model of the product cluster the elements on the schematic now we can cluster or we can make the chunks that what are the various chunks in the product on which we are going to focus cluster the elements on the schematic make geometric layouts to achieve the types of product variety now I, we have already discussed based on the product variety we can make the geometric layouts maybe many times it may so happen that we may not be able to provide a particular chunk for a specific model of a product so that these geometric layouts will help us to achieve the types of product variety then identify the interactions because each and every chunk is interacting with each other so when we identify the interactions there will be fundamental which is must interact then there will be incidental which may happen from time to time which may not be fundamental may not be necessary but maybe during the use of the product sometime this type of interaction between the different chunks may take place so the interactions we can classify broadly into two categories fundamental interactions and the incidental interactions now this is one example 
स्टेप वन फंक्शनल और स्कीमेटिक डायग्राम सो दिस इज बेसिकली टेकन वी कैन सी दिस इज अ एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ रैपिड प्रोटोटाइपिंग मशीन यूजिंग लेजर सेंटरिंग सो बेसिकली द पाउडर इज टेकन एज अ रॉ मटीरियल एंड इट इज सेंटर्ड टू गिव अ पर्टिकुलर शेप नाउ वट इज यूज हेयर लेजर आर यूज सी ओ टू लेजर इज यूज then there will be a powder supply because the raw material is in the form of a powder so there is a part piston where the product will be made this is the position of the piston that where the powder will come and the laser will co2 laser will center that powder then delivery powder is there heat part surface is there there is a laser also cool laser provide inert atmosphere control atmosphere temperature so basically there are laser elements can laser control elements then there are powder control elements how the powder will come how the powder will be rolled how the laser will be able to center the powder how the product uh, will get heated up how it has to be taken out from the build chamber where the product is being made so all these this is the powder cartridge from where the powder will come this is the delivery of the powder this is the roller which is roll the powder on the build platform this is the part piston this is the part which is being made from the powder this is the part which is being made so basically there are different Uh, different chunks in this whole process one is related, related to laser another is related to the powder another is related to the platform where the part will be made another is related to the control processes because we have to move the piston as per the design of the product we have to move the laser as per the design of the product so there has to be overall control of the process so the basic process is that we have a powdered material we have a co2 laser which will center this powder the powder will be compacted maybe with the roller and then when it is once it is centered it will become solid and we will be able to produce a part or a prototype from the powder which is been centered by the co2 laser so that is the process now for this process we have to see that how we will establish our product architecture so the process is known to us the schematic is ready here this is a rapid prototyping process so the concept of rapid prototyping we will cover in the subsequent class maybe in session number 39 so here we see that first step for establishing this product architecture is functional or schematic drawing so this is a schematic drawing which is given here F we will see physical or functional parts we will see because each of the part each of the we can say component or sub element which is listed in the schematic diagram is going to satisfy certain function so then connect the elements which have fundamental interactions show motion and flow so we can see that uh, here the motion and flow is also shown the roller you can see it is shown with the help of the arrows in which direction it will be moving so motion and flow also has to be shown interactions also we can see the interactions are shown here with the help of arrows so we have to this is a first stage where we create a schematic of the overall product or the system or the machine and then we try to show the interactions between the various parts or sub systems of the product and try to show the functional and the physical uh, representation of the product so this is step 1 in step 2 cluster the elements into chunks now here we can see chunks have to be decided so how we why what is the reason for this clustering or making the chunks then we can see which have the close geometric relationship which are sharing the same function because we have seen in the previous uh, slide that we will mark the function for each and every part or the sub system so there may be three or four different sub parts which have the same function so we will make them into a one chunk so we will try to see here then we will try to because here we are creating them into chunks that will be our modular design for each module we can have a uh, thought process and see how this design can be improved and finally desire to outsource many times we may also think that this particular chunk company x has already got 
the monopoly they have the patent and let us buy this complete chunk or this complete module from that organization so that we need not spend our time energy and money on doing research in developing this chunk so that chunk can be directly outsourced to a well established organization so that is a basic purpose of developing the schematic into the individual chunks now let us see that what are the chunks one is the laser table so another one is the atmospheric control unit control the atmosphere temperature provide the inert atmosphere cool the laser so this is atmospheric control unit one chunk shown by green color another chunk shown by blue color here co2 laser the lenses the galvanometer and the mirror so this is a laser table then there is a control process control cabinet this is a third so let us say one by one laser table which is a source of energy atmospheric control unit control cabinet and finally the raw material the powder engine so we have to supply the powder this pink color is the powder engine so we can see here where the uh, position the piston part piston this is the part which is to be made so heat part surface this is the hot part surface here so roller is there so all this roller deliver powder powder cartridge position piston part piston this is just one chunk which is related to the powder then this chunk is related to the laser this chunk is related to the control this chunk is related to providing the environment for doing the processing of the powder into the final product so we have divided the complete schematic into different chunks now maybe our company wants to make a rapid prototyping machine based on the selective laser centering technology we may like to buy the co2 laser from some other source so this laser table and laser system we can outsource it to some other company rest all we can try to develop indigenously so that is the you can say advantage of the product architecture that we know that where is our strength and what all we can get from the industry so this is the second step third step is produce the geometric layout now we have to see how physically our product will look like where the co2 laser must fit in where the table where the sintering will be done where that must be fit in where the control cabinet must be there so note if you can't make a geometrical layout then go back and redefine chunks and identify the interactions so if we are not able to because we want our product architecture to be compact it must be aesthetically appealing it must be nice looking we must be able to appreciate by looking at the system that it not only functionally this product is good but aesthetically also it is very very good so we have to be very very judicious in the selection of the geometric layout of our product so we based on the various chunks we will produce a geometric layout so we can see here this is a laser table structural legs on both side this is a part piston this is a delivery powder so basically the powder cartridge powder is stored here so from here delivery powder will come roller will roll the powder the powder will come here then this laser window will fall on this and it will center it the movement of this laser from here will be based on the cad file that is the design of the product and sintering will take place and the product will be formed accordingly so this is the reference plate so powder engine is here laser table is here so that is basically the various chunks which we have interacted into now one the four basic chunks were there so the control and other parts may be just behind this so behind the screen so we can see that we have to make a geometric layout how the product will look like based on the architectural chunks that we have decided in the previous slide then identify the interactions so forces consideration of geometric interfaces to accommodate the flow so we have to understand that now we have already set geometrically that where which particular chunk has to fit in now we have to see how these are going to interact with each other so it illustrates the possible problems caused by the interactions there can be fundamental lines on the schematic that that connect the 
chunks usually a well understood property incidental can be usually not shown on the schematic higher order effects and inferences many times it may so happen that in the case that we have taken that the temperature is so high within within the build chamber where the powder is being centered that it has a effect on the efficiency and performance of the environment control unit or the atmosphere control unit and it may get trip off. So, it is not the direct interaction, but it may be a incidental or a indirect type of interaction between the two broad chunks. One chunk is the uh, maybe the powder delivery part or another uh, one is the, the example that we have taken the four chunks we have taken one of them was the atmosphere control unit. So, I will go back to the again the slide you can see the atmospheric control unit is one chunk and the powder is uh, feeding is another chunk. So, if there is a problem in the powder feeding chunk it may affect the atmospheric control unit which may not be a planned or a fundamental interaction we do not expect that there will be much interaction between these two chunks, but because of a problem there can be the interaction between the two chunks also which we usually call as the incidental interaction. So, the fundamental interactions basically are the lines on the schematic that connect the chunks which are easily explained here we can see these are the lines which are showing the fundamental interaction between the between the various chunks or the various subsystems. So, here these are the two which are showing the interaction between the chunks different chunks and this, this one is another which is showing the interaction between the powder engine and the uh, this one the red portion is our chunk number uh, red one is our atmosphere control unit. So, the, we can see that there is a interaction between the two here direct interaction when we are uh, feeding the powder, but there can be incidental interaction also. So, product architecture this is an example on your screen you can see complex parts made with the laser centering these type of complex parts can be very easily made which are very difficult to process using the conventional techniques. This is a desk jet printer we can see here different it can also be divided into different chunks Maybe based on the functionality we can have the different chunks in this product also. So, depending upon the functionality depending upon the geometrical layout depending upon the modularity that we want to put into our product we can have different layouts of the various chunks within the product and that basically is the objective of defining the product architecture. So, with this we can conclude the today's session the main objective of today's session was to introduce the concept of product architecture that when we are designing a product we must be very very careful related to the various chunks or modules that we are going to design which are going to be integrated to make our final product. So, what are the different types of uh, modularity that we can introduce in the product architecture with that we have seen. Then we have seen with a step by step approach for selective laser centering how the complete product architecture can be built up. We can have the different functional chunks and then these functional chunks have to be integrated with each other. We have to produce a geometric layout and if we are not able to produce a geometric layout we have to again think regarding the classification of these chunks and once all this is ready we will have to understand the fundamental interactions and the incidental interactions between the various chunks. And once all that is defined we will be able to finally, prototype our product we will be able to make a prototype and test it for launching it into the market. In our next session we will talk about very briefly about the concept of rapid prototyping. Today we have seen about selective laser centering which is a very very maybe important process that is used during rapid prototyping of the product. So, with this we conclude the today's session. Thank you.